We're 11 and 0 on the season, man. We're 11 and 0 once again. We extend our winning streak to 30 plus games, and now we have to go out to Jackson, Mississippi, here at Veterans Memorial State. It's the last home game of the season for the Jackson State Tigers, who are currently on a two-year probation, and they're looking to finish strong. The Grambling State Tigers are in town, and they're looking to finish strong as well. Neither one of these teams are having a great season. So let's see what happens out here in Jackson as we get ready to end the regular season of college football. So as we go into this last week, well, as a matter of fact, well, I forgot we have one more week after this. We got the Army and Navy game before championship week. So in case you're wondering why I'm talking this low, it's because I'm in a hotel right now. That's right. I'm not even in the country. So when you get this, I'll probably be sleeping. So with that being said, Jackson State's coming out on the football field. And by the way, Jim is out here with me. We out here chilling. And but anyway, there goes Adam Price in his last game as a Jackson State Tiger. He leads the team in rushing yards, top 10 in the conference in rushing touchdowns. He's looking to go out with a bang. Sucks that things didn't go his way during his career there. So there goes Jeremy Moore finding Bet the Bostic going past the 30 inside the 20, popped out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. We go late first quarter, and then there goes Jeremy Moore finding Bet the Bostic this time. He goes into the touchdown, and the G men strike first, 7 0 Grambling State. What is Jackson State going to do though? There goes Anthony Weiss stepping back the pass. He pops it deep downfield, and that pass is intercepted. A great interception by Brandon Long, the free safety, and now Graham is looking to capitalize. There goes Jamie Moore. This time he's popping it deep, and look who he finds. Fick the Bostic once again. Touchdown, Grambling State. It's 14-0 right now. So now Jackson State is in trouble. Anthony Weiss pops back, throws it on the run, and he's picked off. He gets picked off once again. This time it's Kelly, impact player. So this time it's a halfback to red. Look at this broken tackle right here. He breaks out of traffic gets to that first down marker. That was a nice run and a terrible display of tackling by Jackson State. This time it's a screen pass to Jeff Harper and look at this, he gets into the end zone for a touchdown. A mess, just an absolute mess. A nice design play here for the tight end, the impact play in tight end and their best player on offense. So now that they're down by two positions, they decide to go to the best running back on the team, Adam Price. And look at that run right there. He gets inside the red zone. So eventually this would lead to three points. That kick is good. 21 to three, Jackson State is still trailing by 18. Now here goes another toss play to Adam Price. Past the 40, goes into Grambling territory. So if they had gave Adam Price the ball earlier, maybe this would be a closer game. So eventually that drop will stall. They set up for another field goal. And now the lead is down to 15 for the Grambling State Tigers. So here goes Jeremy Moore in the Grambling offense back on the field. He pops it deep downfield this time. He's looking for Richardson, and he makes the catch. Zach Richardson on an excellent catch right there. And then eventually this play will stall with this drive. So they will settle for three points, and the lead is now 24-6. to six. So we got Jackson State on offense, Anthony Weiss on an option play. Anthony Weiss pitches it to Adam Price, goes into Grambling State territory, past the 30, inside the 20. He gets tackled around the 15. And Anthony Weiss gets injured, and he's out for the rest of the game. As if things just couldn't get any worse for Jackson State. Their backup quarterback comes into the game. He pops it up the middle, and that's picked off. And there goes Kelly once again on another interception. The impact player at linebacker. So now, Grambling has the ball deep in their own territory. Jamie Moore throws it in the flat, and then Buddy gets tackled for a safety. That's something for the Jackson State fans to cheer about. But here they go once again on offense. Jackson State, that is. Look at this run right here. He fumbled it, and then eventually it was recovered by Grambling State. First and 10, though, however. So this play was stalled, where well, the drive was stalled. I don't know why I keep saying play. But that kick is good, and that was 27-8. So now Jackson State are trying to get into the end zone for the first time today, and that's an absolute fail. Look at that interception right there, and he almost took that back for a pick six, but thanks to Adam Price, that didn't happen. T. Thomas on the last interception of the game, and the Jackson State Tigers end the season at 4-7, Grambling 
go to three and eight. I'm glad nobody knocked on my door while I was doing this because I would have to beat their ass. And now here goes Jim rather not. When you saw those Alabama State Hornets beat Wisconsin 45 to 24, I have no idea why I'm talking this slow. I don't care if we're in a hotel. I don't care about that, man. Just do it, Jim. Damn. All right, all right. So Prairie View a and finally stopped their losing streak versus the Texas Southern Tigers in the Labor Day Classic. They won 42 to 11 and straight blew them out. But then Cutman comes up short versus Alcorn State 21 to 17. Alcorn finishes at four and seven. Alabama A&M after a great start to the season end the season at three and eight. They lose to Mississippi Valley State, and I believe this win gives Valley the division. Southern comes up short versus Florida A&M. Southern is bowl eligible too. And then there goes Arkansas Pine Bluff getting put on a spliff by the Arizona State Sun Devils. And you saw Grandma State beat Jackson State 27 to 8. This is so cringy. Meanwhile, over at the MEAC, Iowa State beat Howard. Hampton lost to Houston 31 to 6. Tennessee State lost to Illinois. And South Carolina State came up 10 points short to Michigan 38 to 23. Nobody in the MEAC won this weekend. As you see, Navy beat Norfolk State 31 to 3. An absolute miss. So let's look at the latest BCS rankings. So Florida and Alabama State as of right now are set to meet for the national championship game unless things hit the fan come championship week. And there goes LSU, Ohio State, and USC running up the top five. San Jose State has been a very big surprise this season. The Michigan Wolverines in their season in disappointment. They lost their last two games. And there goes Alabama at number 10. Can't believe they're still in the top 10. And the Wahoos running it out at number 15. Bet the you, coach. I can't do this anymore. This sucks. Y'all don't mind Jim. He tweaking right now. But let's look at the Heisman watch list. Don Robbie is still on top. Followed by Matt Randall of San Jose State. And Sean Hawkins of San Jose State. So San Jose back, State back, and back, Alabama back, State back. have two players on this list. Followed by the long SEC player John Cole of the Florida Gators. The whack and the swag are really representing this season. So let's look at the players of the week. We got Jared Brown from Prairie View a and in his big performance versus rival Texas Southern. And there goes George Sims of Mississippi Valley State doing his thing versus Alabama a and James Tate and Darius Pittman round out MEAC players of the week. And Pittman had a hat trick of sex on that. Dang. Nine tackles, seven for loss, and three sacks. That's a crazy stat line. So let's go over to the SWAC standings. So as of now, the season is over. Mississippi Valley State somehow snuck in and took the SWAC East for the second straight year. Mississippi Valley State is going to Detroit, Michigan. That's going to be our opponent. So once again, we have to go against Peter Blaylock. Not just the passer, but the runner as well. Should be an interesting matchup. So there we are. Florida a and actually finished in second place this season and was 1-1 one, one away from being bowl eligible. We might have to look out for them next season. So Southern won six games, but they finished behind a 4-7 Jackson State team. So join us next time for the regular season finale with the Army-Navy game. And we're going to do a SWAT championship preview with the Mississippi Valley State of the Devils and the Alabama State Hornets. Join us next time. Peace.